Hello everybody. Today is going to be a very, very serious video that I want to put together for you guys. I want to talk about what is wrong with the audio industry. I think a lot of these points that I'm going to highlight are going to resonate with a lot of you. And I urge you to please pay close attention to what I'm about to say because I think a lot of truth is about to be told. Before I start, I want to make sure you guys understand this is my point of view, my opinion. Yours may be different. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe, hit that like button. If you really are feeling this video, if you really like what I'm about to say, all I can ask you is to hit that subscribe button. Continue to support me because videos like this one hardly ever come by. I have been very heavily involved deep in the trenches, I should say, with the audio industry. Never worked with any brand, never worked as far as manufacturing anything or being hired by any type of brand. I do represent some brands for full transparency, as you know, Strong Tank being one of them. So I have to be fully transparent. So everything I'm about to say also applies to me. I want you guys to understand that. I am in it too, because I'm part of the audio community. I'm about to name five different things that must change in the audio industry. First thing is I want to address dealers. Dealers tend to have the feeling of ownership of a customer because perhaps this is a repeat customer. I've seen it in the past where they feel like if someone goes into their store and they spent $200,000, $100,000, right? And it's a repeat customer of theirs. They get angry, bitter, upset. The moment that customer goes elsewhere and buys from another reputable dealer. To me, it's just the wrong way of handling business. I don't think any dealer owns any customer at all. Customers should have the ability, they have the right to buy from whoever the hell they want to buy from. Okay, they're not married to you dealers. They're not married in any way, shape or form. So I want you guys to understand that this, in, this mentality of feeling upset at a customer and not answering their calls because maybe they went and bought from another dealer, okay, is completely just unacceptable, okay? That person earns that money every day. However it is that they make that money, it is their money. They are, they are entitled to spend it however they wish to spend it, okay? They're not married, as I, get, as I said, they're not married to you all. So that behavior to me is ridiculous. It needs to come to an end. Okay, you provide the best ser service possible as a dealer. You make sure you treat that customer with respect. He spends money with you. He is able to hopefully get great customer service from you. And if one day he decides to buy a different brand that you don't carry, he has the full right to go elsewhere. And you shouldn't be upset that he went and bought something else from perhaps your enemy dealer down the street. To me, that is just complete BS. Okay, it starts there. Now, that said, I have to talk about my next point, which is end users, us, buyers. And I'm gonna use myself as an example so that you understand the message loud and clear. I go, I visit a dealer, I sit in that chair, all day long, four or five hours. I flew in from out of town, okay? I tell the dealer what I need to hear, what I'm coming in for, what speakers, what combination I want to hear. 
The dealer writes down the appointment. He has his crew ready to assemble a system and disassemble it in the, in the event that you want to try a different amplifier while you're there. Now this dealer is there spending time out of his day when he could be answering phone calls from other customers to dedicate it to you. And I'm hoping the dealer is dedicating this time to you. If you set up an appointment, that's what needs to happen. So he's there preparing the entire room for you, okay? Listening to your demands, changing songs, letting you, letting you play your own music, okay? Hoping to make a sale, okay? Hoping that this time that they're putting in is worth, worth it to them. Only to see and find out two weeks later that you went to the used market or went to another dealer that gave you a better deal and bought the same item you went to here at this other dealer. To me, that's just, that's just lame. To me, that's just having absolutely no loyalty of any kind. To me, that's wasting somebody's time knowing that you're not going to buy from that dealer, knowing that you're using the dealer as a retail brick and mortar location because your intent is to buy it on eBay. Your intent is to buy it on Amazon. Your intent is to buy it on the used market, wherever that may be. So you're utilizing that dealer, that dealer's time, resources, overhead, employees to your benefit. That's just not, that's just not what real people do. That's just so dishonest. That is really something that I just despise. And if I were to do, if I were to become a dealer, a brand, a store, I just wouldn't have any patience for that. I'm being honest here. If you want to do what I do, which is to try things to see how you like it, okay, then go ahead and buy it from the used market, whatever you're looking for. And if you hate it, sell it on the used market and take a loss. Okay, if that's what you're into, then you buy the item, you try it and sell it if you hate it. But don't go knocking on dealers' doors, wasting their time. That is just absolutely unacceptable. I have done it in the past in my early days. I'm guilty of the same. But it's quite unfair, which brings me to another point. A lot of you guys are looking for deals on all of this used audio stuff, everything. I do the same thing. Once again, I do the same thing. But you want a deal 25% off, you want white glove service, you want for the dealer to put the box inside your car, you want for the dealer to assist you setting it up in the event that that is something that has computer software, you want the dealer to give you a loaner in case the item breaks under warranty, you want the dealer to pick it up, you want... The moment you're looking for a deal, you are basically waiving your rights to that level of customer service. That is supposed to be the point. You take full liability in the event that something were to happen. Now, this does not mean that the item has no warranty. Maybe you bought a new item at 20% off. It will come with a manufacturer's warranty. But the dealer is not going to go out of his way to support you, to cater to you, to make a lot of calls. No, he'll give you the receipt so you can go to the manufacturer's website, enter the information, and get warranty service through the factory, not the dealer. That's what's supposed to happen when you're looking for, for deals. You are taking responsibility of any potential issues that arise. The reason why a dealer is charging MSRP, in case you do not know and cannot connect the dots, is to give you that extra service. And I'm hoping that dealers are doing this because if they're not doing that and you're paying full MSRP, that might be the wrong dealer to go back to. And I'm going to repeat that again. You may not want to see that dealer again. They're supposed to support you. They're supposed to help you with setup if they can, within reason. They're supposed to answer your calls. They're supposed to put a loaner, if possible, in the event that yours needs service. That is what a real dealer does. Magazines. Nobody wants to sit in their living room reading print anymore. I don't know if you guys got the memo the email, the smoke signals that nobody wants to read in their living room, any print, any magazines anymore. A lot of the old audio files are dying, unfortunately. And it's sad to hear that, but that's the truth. Which brings me to my next point, which is Generation Z and Millennials, which is 
the new audiophile generation. I am going to put up something that you guys need to read to understand what I'm saying. Gen Z and millennials get their news fix through social media. Okay? When it comes to news, the younger generations turn to social media. According to our survey, 65% of 18 to 24 year olds, Generation Z, and 61% of 25 to 34 year olds, millennials, list one or more social media as their preferred source of news. I'm not making this up, I'm giving you facts. I went out there and did my homework. This is reality. And I've seen some of the social media from a couple of magazines. They're starting to make an effort. To be sincere, I do not know why it has taken you so long to make a social media presence, to put out content, to see you stand next to audio world right behind you while you're talking while you're creating while you're writing or you're articulating whatever it is that you need to say about a product some of the videos I've seen online are lackluster with all the money that you have you should be putting out quality video content okay quality production content you should be dominating social media but it's sad to see that youtubers with far less resources, far less money, produce better quality content than you all do. Okay, and this is not a stab or a knock. I'm not trying to be harsh here. I am, I'm telling the truth here. Everyone can comment underneath right now and tell me if I'm wrong with what I'm saying. You guys need to really, really step it up because there is going to be more influencer presence over time. We're not going to go away. None of us are going to go away. There's going to be more of me, more of other YouTubers. And so if, you are pre if your presence is so lackluster, nobody's going to come to you for nothing. And a lot of these manufacturers that want to put out reviews, I'm telling you right now, are going to start looking this way, are going to start looking at social media presence because print I hate to say it, but it's been said many times. It is dead. Manufacturers. I want to ask all manufacturers, why is it that you guys are so sensitive to criticism? In this industry, audio industry, why is that? Why are you all so sensitive? Why can't you take real criticism? See, I follow a lot of YouTubers car enthusiasts, okay, all over YouTube. And I see reviews every week of a different car model. I see the YouTuber sitting in the back seat talking about how inferior or cheap the interior quality of that car is and how for $40,000 you can get a car for 30 that has better premium parts inside. The feel of the car is more premium. It rides better. It has more quality. Why is it that that is allowed and not frowned upon in the car industry? And I'm sure there are other industries in which this is displayed. But why is it that if I were to bring two power amplifiers, brand A, brand B, okay, and you are presenting, introducing a new amplifier at, let's just say, $15,000, and I buy that amplifier, bring it here, set it next to, let's say, a Luxman 900U that MSRP'd for $15,000 off the top of my head. And I talk about it and show it here. Look at how much more you get from a Luxman at the same price point than this other brand. Look at the feel, the quality, the weight, the beauty of the unit, not to mention the reliability. If I did that, now I am essentially the black sheep of the audio industry. Why is that? Why can't you guys take that criticism? You guys are in the business to put out quality products and it's competition amongst yourselves that gives us consumers better quality products. So if you are creating, manufacturing something at a price point, make sure that you are really pricing 
the product correctly. Because people like me who are self-financed, I can bring that product in here and show something comparable that can easily trump what you've built. But once again, you are so sensitive that if I did that, all of a sudden Jay from Jay's Audio Lab is no good and he's out there to do harm. What is it with the sensitivity that you manufacturers have? What is the problem? This happens across all platforms throughout different industries, not just the audio world. It's what's supposed to happen. Finally, I wanna talk about us, influencers, YouTubers, because we cannot escape, because we are part of the problem too. I have been on YouTube for approximately three years and four months, and I've learned so much. And I wanna share with you guys who do not have a YouTube channel, a few things. The effort needed to create a successful YouTube channel, to run a successful YouTube channel is beyond your own comprehension. You really do not know how much work is involved with creating a YouTube channel unless you have a YouTube channel of your own. Constant content, figure it, figuring out opportunities to deliver news or to give you exciting stuff to view, okay? Folks, this is a very difficult platform to be on. It is not It is not for the faint of heart. You have to have thick skin to be here. Now, we as YouTubers have a responsibility, which is number one, first and foremost, is being objective. Objective. That is the most important thing here, is being objective and having absolutely zero agendas or any sort of bias. I just mentioned I represent Strong Tank. So common sense will tell you I am biased with Strong Tank, right? Fair enough. That said, I should be able to give other power conditioners or regenerators a better shot at shining in my lab at performing, at actually testing them without being 100% biased with Strom Tank. I see many other YouTubers hyping up their brands out there and believing in nothing else but what they represent. I have a problem with that, okay? Because, I, and once again, I do it as well. I do the same thing, but I think that's a problem that we as YouTubers need to fix. We need to fix. If you have an opinion as a YouTuber, if we have an opinion as a YouTuber, and we believe brand A is better than brand B, can you back it up? Do you have both items inside your room? Can you talk to the masses showing what you're talking about? Not just doing what magazines have done, which is to talk about a product that they may not even have in the room. Okay, they write about a product that you never saw. As an influencer, a reviewer, I feel that there is more credibility when you can put both products right next to each other and you can be completely objective and really talk about the pros and the cons. There is no perfect product. Every product has a con. So as YouTubers, that responsibility is on us to be objective and to really prove the masses what we're talking about whenever that's possible. Another thing that we have to stop doing is attacking other brands because maybe we had a bad relationship with the brand. Maybe we do not like the CEO of the company. Maybe they gave you a, the, a dirty look at a show. So now we feel like we have to talk trash about the brand. Let's put our feelings aside here. We need to focus on the audio components not necessarily that relationships that we may have. We may not like certain brands as far as how the company runs, but we probably love the product and what the product is about. And we need to learn to differ differentiate that as YouTubers. This is all part of us growing, okay? And I'm gonna ask the audience, those of you who follow me, becoming a successful YouTuber is an evolution. I've been guilty of a lot of things throughout my last three years here on YouTube. But I think every YouTuber has also been guilty of the same.
because we're all humans and we're all trying to grow. And it's a huge effort, guys, huge battle day in, day out to bring to you guys quality content so that you can enjoy and actually believe in the work that we do. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this video. And I hope that going forward, we can all come together rather than tear each other apart. It doesn't help us. It doesn't help all of us when we have one thing in common, which is this hobby. Please comment below and give me your input on what I have just articulated. Thank you for your time, and I will see you soon.